Hello, and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Nikita Patel from Softrans. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there, and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Nikita Patel, a senior data analyst at Softrans, and normally this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Nikita, hello and welcome. Hey, Shannon. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me on this this podcast today. I'm so glad you're here. So tell me, okay, so you're a senior data analyst at Softrans. So tell me, what type of business is Softrans? That is right. SoftRams uh, is not a typical software consulting firm. Um, We focus a lot on innovation, um, user research, um, and specialize in delivering innovative software solutions uh, for federal industry primarily. Um, We've received a lot of awards for innovation. And uh, just recently, um, we were ranked 28 on the Inc. Best Workplace for Innovators. Oh, how very cool. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. So what do you do for Softrans? What's your typical work week look like? Um, So I work on a project um, that supports um, the federal healthcare client, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Um, The goal of this project uh, is to support CMS's vision to reduce the cost um, and improving the quality of services. Uh, by implementing several healthcare models for alternative payment options. Um, And we we built a serverless cloud-based provider enrollment system that allows accountable care organizations to enroll providers. Um, So essentially, we we get a lot of, we we produce a lot of data um, from this system that we've built. Um, And we're talking about terabyte here. Um, So essentially, we are at the tip of the entire model management data ecosystem. And the data starts from us, um, but we also collect a lot of data from other stakeholders. Um, So we store transient data in data marts, and once a month, an automated data pipeline moves um, all this data from the marts to the data warehouse. Um, So just to take a step back here and answer your original question, what do I do here on this project? So my role expands uh, beyond data, and uh, I'm not just being involved on the backend side of the systems, uh, but I also have to really deal with everything uh, or anything uh, or really any system that touches data. So I have to understand the system that produces this data um, and the data pipelines um, that transform the data at several stages um, and also the systems that stores this data. I have to ensure uh, that the systems are doing the right thing uh, in the production environment. Um, and the entire process is ongoing and it repeats on a periodic basis, depending on uh, what model you're looking at. So it starts with defining uh, really uh, the quality of data and I'm not going to use any acronyms or any terms um, from the Dama book. Um, but when I say, you know, really defining the quality of data, it could be as simple as making sure the required values are there or looking at the nulls or the min max value uh, looking at the basic stats um, there could be a whole lot of data dimensions uh, that i could be looking at but you know just defining what quality data looks like and then once i have uh, the quality data defined i would start thinking about the business data rule well the data rules and the data metrics uh, and then um start building these shacks uh, that govern the data quality requirements. And once I have these in place, I would execute them on an ongoing basis. 
Um, so really making sure that the quality of data is maintained throughout the data flow from when it's produced to transform to when it's saved and when it's ready for analytics to be generated out of that data. Um, and uh, right now we are in the process of automating all these checks and I would want to build an automated data pipeline um, that puts, uh, that generates and puts all these data metrics uh, on a dashboard format um, to be able, for us to be able to share uh, with our stakeholders for them to view uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, but I know I'm making a big difference here because this data that we share with the downstream systems uh, will be used to make the final determinations of how these pay, how the payments are processed to the accountable care or organizations that are participating in these healthcare models. Um, and uh, now that we've built this provider enrollment solution this year, we are going to focus a lot on AI for BI. Uh, which is what our CEO says. So really uh, we would like to use generative AI to let our stakeholders generate analytics for them. Um, so we would just build a AI engine uh, with a catalog of data libraries and they could use plain English language to build dashboards and really get answers to any business or policy related questions they would have. Um, so. Just to summarize what I do, um, I do a lot of data quality, data analysis, build data pipelines, uh, do data analytics. Uh, I've also played around with Gen AI and I cannot wait to start working on Gen AI starting this year. Oh, very cool. Uh, and and how what a great uh, use case for that. Um, so, um, so tell me Nikita, is this the, was this the dream? say when you were six years old like when you <laughs> was this a dream did you say i'm gonna grow up and be a senior data analyst well i knew i wanted to be an engineer um but really uh didn't learn about my knack for data until a few years in my career uh, so it took some time and realization to figure out that i really love and have a passion for data what was the dream when you were just when you were really young? What was it? Um, so I I I have a an undergrad degree in electronics and communication engineering, um, and I started my career as an intern, designing batch antenna for Indian Space Research Organization. Um, mm -hmm. So I was really programming um, the radio frequencies and the dimensions of the antenna to really attain the right radiations. Um, I really like the programming part of it. So I figured to get into software programming, um, although I was an electronics engineer by education. Um, so I prepared and uh, got accepted into a global software training program at Infosys. Again, it's one of the top five uh, software consulting firms in India. And I was trained there, like rigorous training on different uh, software languages. I was trained to be a software developer and a tester. And uh, some of the languages that I was trained on, which I can think of right now, were Java and C, C++, uh, JavaScript, and um, CICS and Kabul and uh, DB2 and uh, SQL. Um, some of the language are, languages are even obsolete right now. Um, but as I was you know, learning these languages, I realized my love for database languages. And uh, But um, really, I started developing this passion for data during one of my projects with Dun and & Bradstreet. And uh, it was a data modernization project. Um, and uh, the need of the, for, for the client was to migrate uh, all the legacy systems um, mm -hmm. to data warehouse. Um, and uh, I was working on validating the system uh, for a very complex uh, data overriding module. Um, and uh, it was then that, that that was my first encounter um, of working um, on real life production data. Um, and although originally I was tasked um, to validate the system, um, I started paying close attention um, to data and uh, started finding um, system issues from the inside I drew from data. And this is when I realized um, what difference data could 
make on businesses. Um, so really there were all these uh, different businesses data uh, that Dun and Bradstreet was accountable for and uh, businesses, uh, you know, financial, regulatory compliance, sales and marketing uh, data was was stored in their warehouse, and um, they were really uh, they heavily relied on Dun and Bradstreet's accurate migration of this data from legacy systems to the data warehouse to ensure what their data was correct, and they don't didn't lose any critical information in this migration process. Um, but at the end of the project, I I received a, a star award. Um, for my technology and um, data savvy contributions to the project. And it was then uh, that I realized that, uh, you know, I, I really needed to get a formal education in information systems and management. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yes. So I pursued a, a graduate degree uh, in information systems and management from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, um, and at CMU, uh, I got heavily involved on a lot, on a lot of data intensive uh, research projects with IBM, um, with Bayer, MITRE, um, and even a local hospital, which was West Bend Allegheny Health Systems. Um, so now that you know I've been in the healthcare industry for several years, I've realized that once you've mastered uh, the best practices and data solutions for one industry, I think it can be easily tailored and simulated across other industries as well. Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me, so let me back it up a little bit. So you initially went into um, university for engineering. Mm -hmm. So what made you initially want to be an engineer? What, what drew you to that? So I was always driven by technology. Um, and uh, I, so I, and I was really intrigued by the hardware and the software component of electronics engineering. Um, so being able to understand how those different components fit together was my dream, um, which is why I really figured electronics engineering is the right track to choose because that give that would give me enough exposure to be involved both on the hardware as well as the software, like the programming side of it, to give me a holistic picture of, um, you know, like a complete engineering, like building, but at the same time programming to make sure what you build is working correctly. Gotcha. Makes sense. And then you, and then from there, Infosys was your first job from, from university? Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, and then you transitioned to... Well, uh, yeah. sorry, let me back it up a little. So, <laughs> so after... Uh, my engine, electronics engineering degree. I interned at Indian Space Research Organization for a bit. Um, that's when I was really um, designing patch antennas for space, um, and uh, was you know not a, not only building these antennas, but I was also programming the antennas, the software programming part of it, to ensure um, you know all the programming was coupled correctly with the hardware piece of it. Mm -hmm. So like the antennas should be radiating in a certain way. There should be accurate patterns established. Um, and that can be only done if it was programmed correctly. Um, and that's when I really realized that um, I, I, I was more passionate about programming versus really building things. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. And, and what a, what a cool place to, uh, to learn that. Mm hmm uh, I think I think the number one answer I get to uh, what people wanted to be when they grow up is an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not an astronaut, but I think <laughs> I did love <laughs> being an engineer. <laughs> not space. being on moon, but <laughs> an engineer who could send people to moon. <laughs> space. Yeah. That's very cool. I love that. So that's a, um, so then emphasis and, and Dun and Bradstreet. Um, 
And then from Dun & Bradstreet, um, so when did you transition to Soft Trails? What's the, the link there? Yes, so I did have some journey. Um, well, um, so after graduation, um, I was working as a system data analyst for financial industry, for one of the financial clients. It was a big uh, syndicate lending software company, uh, Mises. Um, and I worked as a system data analyst for them for a bit. Um, and then I was also working for NextGen Healthcare, um, again, as a data and measures and systems analyst. Um, and uh, I switched my, I, in the same role, but I switched to Mathematica. But again, I was working as a policy researcher and a data analyst, so really using data to draw insights um, for policy and decision-making uh, mm -hmm. at Mathematica. And from Mathematica, it's been two years since I've been at Softrams. Very cool. Oh, so I, I love that. So um, so tell me, what's been your biggest career, uh, your biggest lesson so far in your career? Um, so my biggest lesson would be to continuously learn new technologies and businesses. Um, and uh, also to be hands-on because it's really important to apply uh, what you learn in real life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's crucial for success. I think you're so right because it's so different when you start applying it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, well, having a passion for data for for most of for almost all of your career, you know, what is your definition of data? Um, that's a good question. Um, so, data to me is information, mm -hmm. and it's everywhere, um, and it's in different forms. Um, so, you when you think of data, it doesn't necessarily have to be only structured data in databases and technology. It could be unstructured data like voice. Uh, you know, it could be digital or non-digital. You, you're looking at digital forms of data like images and you know, non-digital like papers and documents. Um, but really, it's just a matter of collecting the right information in the right format to make accurate decisions. Um, and I can think of a recent analogy when it comes to data and its definition. Um, so I had a power outage in my formal dining room a uh, few weeks ago um, and had an electrician come over to check it out. I told him that the breaker for that room had tripped and it would not turn back on. Uh, I'd also told him that this had happened second time in three months um, and it happens every time it rains, although the last time it had occurred, uh, you know, the break, I could turn the breaker back on, uh, I think a week after the breaker was stripped. Uh, we didn't really have anybody come over to diagnose the problem because the breaker turned back on. But now that we were facing the same issue, I figured to have it checked by an electrician. So with this set of data, the electrician um, had something to start with, uh, but with this information, he went straight um, to the formal dining room and he started uh, taking all the light fixtures out. Um, and when I asked him, uh, he said in his experience, when there is an outage in a room, it's most likely due to a faulty light fixture. And uh, he ended up not finding any issues with the fixture and he went back. Uh, I had another electrician come over and who processed the same information I gave to the prior electrician and uh, he went to the basement, pulled the circuit breaker and he, what he found was really surprising. He found a lot of water in the circuit breaker. Uh, oh. Turns out that uh, the circuit breaker, which was connected to the main line outside my home, uh, the water from the main line was seeping through the line and uh, getting collected in the circuit breaker. And every time it would rain, uh, the water would get collected and it was seeping all the time uh, through the breaker switch. Um, so really what I thought was, you know, the first guy failed to recognize an important piece of data that I had given him um, and straight up 
introduced bias um, in his data collection and with bias data, he ended up producing a biased analysis and eventually didn't even have figured out the root cause for the problem. But uh, anyways, uh, this was just my way of explaining what data is and what information is and how you could use to um, derive analysis and results and you know find out root causes for any issues you're finding. That's, that's a great example. <laughs> and probably the last place you want water collecting. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, goodness. So so tell me then, you know, do you see the importance, especially as you're playing with uh, generative AI, um, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? That's, again, a great question. Um, I would say absolutely yes. Um, I mean, we have financials, um, regulatory compliance, uh, legal sales, marketing, policy, innovations, and all these are going to be data-driven. Um, you know, businesses rely, are going to start relying on uh, data more and more to answer these questions. And as we're moving towards uh, machine learning and AI, uh, I think if you're having biased data uh, or non-contextual data, that you are um, feeding into the analytics engine or even the models, essentially AI is going to deliver biased information. Um, so your data has to be contextual and it has to be unbiased. Um, to put it in context in layman's terms, um, this question always reminds me of a movie I watched, um, The Mitchells versus the Machines. Um, and in the movie, um, the model was trained on biased data and at the end of the in, at the end, the entire mission fails since AI could not recognize the difference between a dog versus a pig. So data mm. is going to be mission critical. Uh, I mean, systems are going to be vulnerable if these data threats are um, recognized by attackers. So we really need to address the root cause, which is you know designing and collecting high quality contextual data to get correct and unbiased AI decisions. So really focusing on the data infrastructure and data quality uh, and spreading the data literacy, I think is going to be key. I could not disagree with that at all. Um, I, I'm right there with you. So what advice would you give then to people looking to get into a career in data management in any aspect of data? That's a good question again. Um, so I would say um, for all the folks out there who are trying to get into a career in data, do your research on what's out there and what you like. Um, and again, you know, data is not just about data storage. There are all these different aspects to data. There is data architecture and there's data mining and collection and there's data storage and data security, data quality, data transformations and data governance and data management and data analytics, AI and machine learning. So really learn about all these terms and what they really mean and what mm -hmm. aspects of data you really enjoy and feel connected with. Um, and there are so many online um, resources and online uh, learning platforms and uh, you know there's so much open um, source uh, tools and technologies that you could leverage um, and get some hands-on experience and there are so much so many uh, open source uh, you know data sets that they, you could use um, to get that hands-on feeling um, after you do your research to figure out if you really enjoy working with data and what aspect of data you're really passionate about before you make the final determination. That is, yeah, I, I like that a lot because there are so many aspects, right? There's especially, and there's new ones emerging all the time. Absolutely. So, uh, um, Nikia, this has been such fun and so exciting to get to know you. So I, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, if somebody wanted to solicit the uh, help of Soft Trans, how would they get a hold of you or Soft Trans? Yes, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, you would have my LinkedIn information. I'm happy to share 
uh, my soft Rhymes email or even my personal email address. I'm happy to connect with folks who are interested to uh, be part of this organization. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to touch base with me or I think we have a big HR group who should be able to answer all the questions um, that folks would have um, in terms of recruitment or, you know, what are the open positions uh, we have and what are the interests or passion really. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will get those links posted to the podcast page for sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you so much, Nikita, for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you for having me. This was great. Absolutely. I love listening and hearing everybody's journey. So, and for all of our listeners, listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest podcast and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time, stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.